Hello and welcome to a brand new series of Astranti case study exam tip videos. And in each video, I'll be going through a common error that students make in the case study exams. And I'll show you how to avoid making that mistake so you can be sure to pass your exam. In this video, we'll be taking a look at our second common mistake, and that is a poor writing style. We looked at the first mistake in an earlier video, and that was answering the question. So if you haven't seen that, go and find that video and watch that one. So in this video, as I say, we'll be looking at the second common mistake, which is a poor writing style. Now, unlike the objective test exams, case study exams require long form written answers. And that means you'll need to be able to write well, clearly communicating your point concisely within an overall logical structure. And that can be harder than it sounds. So it's essential that you understand how students make this mistake and what you can do to avoid it. And you'd be amazed at just how many people really struggle with this. And I have seen students go from failing grades and failing scores to passing with high scores in their mock exams simply by addressing this issue of poor writing style. So let's take a look at what that looks like and how to avoid it. So you'll know that you're falling into this trap if you end up with confusing long paragraphs that seem to go around in circles, making the same point in seven different ways. This is not good. You'll only get a mark for making a good point. So there's really no need to repeat yourself. And if you find yourself repeating yourself, then it's a sign that you're trying to approve upon your first attempt. And if that's the case, you should work on making your first attempt more concise and to the point. There's no point saying the same thing three times in different ways. Just work on getting it right the first time. Another obvious sign of a poor writing style is inconsistent paragraph length. Some long rambling sentences, like we mentioned a moment ago, others that are little more than a sentence. And this means that you aren't consistently developing each point throughout your answer. And so you may be losing marks for not developing your answer enough where you've got short sentences and short paragraphs. And you may be wasting time over explaining something you've already got the marks for with those long rambling paragraphs. So how do you avoid making this mistake? So, well, here's the solution. Try and stick to this structure on the screen as much as you can. With the paragraph structure, first of all, you want to make your point and then go on to apply it to the case. And that's the general structure that works. Now, it won't always work. It's not always appropriate to use this paragraph structure, but generally it will work most of the time. And it will ensure that you are being direct, you are applying each point to the scenario, and then importantly, moving on to the next point, not wasting your time too, too much with any single point. And it's important, you always want to be using a direct answer style. You want to get to the point and directly address the requirement with which you have been tasked. If you remember the first video where we looked at how important it is to make sure you answer the requirement, you'll know how important it is to stay on track in your answer to make sure your response is actually answering the question that you've been asked. So the key thing to remember here, if you go into the exam, remember this, get to the point and say it once, okay? So make your point, you'll have good points to make and we'll look at how you can come up with those points by planning and how important planning is in a later video. But in this video, we're gonna focus on making the point and saying it once, and focusing on being clear, concise, direct, and getting to the point and moving on once you've made that point, okay? So don't waffle, resist the urge to repeat yourself and use the time you have to make as many unique points that are applicable to the case as you can. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So on the screen here in the blue boxes, you can see two different paragraphs written in very different ways. And they are responses to the same task, the same overall question. And this overall question is a question on the benefits and drawbacks of appraisals. So let's just look at the first one. Appraisals can motivate staff. Staff will be happier after having an appraisal. Talking things through makes people feel better. They will know they are in a warm environment and feel careful, cared for. Now, that is more or less the same thing said in three or four different ways. 
it's not very direct. It's a little bit vague. Okay. It's not obvious that we're talking about benefits. It's not been established and it's kind of waffly a bit kind of, you know, it doesn't really make much of a point. It's, there's not, it's not going to, if you write like that in the exam, you're not going to get, you may be at half a mark for something like that. Whereas you could be getting one or two marks for, you know, taking this point and fully developing it, which we see in the second paragraph. So exactly the same point is being made, but this time it's being made directly, concisely, and it's being fully developed. So appraisals can be used to identify the development needs of staff by agreeing areas where they need to improve current work or develop for future roles or to obtain a promotion. Okay, so already in that first sentence, it's clear, it's to the point and explains exactly what appraisals can be used for their purpose. Training or development programs can then be agreed that are specific to these needs and support the individual, both motivating them and improving their work performance. So in that second sentence, you're moving on from the purpose or one of the points of appraisals, and you're moving on to exactly how that relates to staff with the training or development programs, how that helps staff uh, to identify needs and to support the staff, and therefore motivates the staff and improves their working performance. So you're making that link from the point you're making at the start right the way through to kind of conclusion at the end. So you can see that's a much better paragraph. Only two sentences. We look at the first one. That was four sentences, but they were all very short. And they weren't really getting you anywhere. Second one, two well-written sentences that get to the point and really make that point clearly. Okay, so the way to practice this, of course, is to sit mock exams to get used to writing under exam conditions. And if you get marking and feedback as well, the tutors and the markers will be able to help you develop your answers by showing you where you've gone wrong and where you can develop your answers more. And of course, at Stranti, we offer a range of mock exams for all the case study levels. So if you're interested in that, do check those out. Okay, so that's it then. The second common error is a poor writing style. And hopefully now you can avoid making this mistake. And even if you do, you can identify where you've done it and learn from your mistake. Failure is after all an important lesson but you'd much rather fail a mock exam than the real thing. That's all for now. The next common error will be running out of time in the exam. And I'll be showing you what that looks like and how you can avoid it and how to have better time management in the exam. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you there. So if you found that video useful, we have many more videos like that one on our YouTube channel. So give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want access to more of that content. We are also around in other places on social media. We have an Instagram page. We are available on Twitter and we have a number of Facebook groups related to which particular level you are at. So if you're an operational student, have a look for our operational group where you'll find useful content there. And of course, you can find us at our website, www.astranti.com, where you can get access to many free materials.